Mary had a little man. Man, man, man. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. It's $5 Friday, you bastards. Hearing a hurricane is headed toward Southern California is going to be very confused, as I was, because it doesn't <laughs> happen a lot. Yeah, you got to go back to 1939, the last time we had a tropical storm make landfall in Southern California. So oh this is God. significant, and people are going to be caught off guard with this system. We're closely monitoring it, but this storm intensified by 75 miles per hour just in the past 24 hours. So it is a Cat 4, winds right now at 145 miles per hour. When will we feel the impacts? Well, the Baja Peninsula right here, this is part of Mexico, of course, they'll feel impacts by Saturday morning. But as late as early as Saturday evening into Southern California, certainly into the day on Sunday and once again on Monday across much of the southwestern U.S. But this storm is going to encounter some significantly cooler water compared to where it's um, m moving across right now. And this is going to significantly weaken the storm as it approaches California. But it's likely, and there's explicit wording from the National Hurricane Center, that this will still pack the punch of a tropical storm as it reaches, let's oh say, San God. Diego, perhaps into Los Angeles. Hi. Now, this is a game of miles. If this storm stays offshore, we have more coastal impacts, erosion, large waves, rip currents, and even the urban flooding just because of the proximity proximity to the larger cities. But if it moves inland, it starts to get sheared apart by the Baja Peninsula. It brings the flash flood and wind threat more inland. Certainly mudslides and the uh, flooding is a big concern here as the potential exists for upwards of a year's worth of rain, if not more, out of this storm system within a, a period of a day or two, really. Yeah, it's like we're playing some weird ass game of, uh, you know, climate musical chairs. Uh, Jessica called me yesterday and she's like, uh, you know, uh, isn't this why I left Florida? Like, uh, uh, you know, she's in L.A. and she's like, aren't you supposed to be calling me, telling me that you're under a hurricane watch? Isn't it supposed to be the other way around? I go, I don't know, but if there's an earthquake in Florida, you'll be the first person I call. Because this is like the weirdest freaking summer of climate musical chairs. I've never seen anything quite like that. I mean, Oregon. You, you look at Oregon, 108 degrees in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Yesterday, I mean, you, you've got wildfires all across Canada from the west to the east. They're trying to um, empty out uh, a little place uh, called, what, uh, Yellowknife? Uh, I'm sure it's gorgeous because, you know, uh, British Columbia, the whole northwestern portion of uh, Canada, it's just, wow, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's stunning. Um, I've only ever been to uh, Victoria, you know, the island and the mainland, and then Banff. Uh, in Lake Louise. Oh my God, that, that place is just, it's breathtaking and now it's on fire. Oh, great. All across Canada. And so uh, now it's three o'clock Eastern time. It's 10 after three Eastern time Friday. So the deadline for evacuating Yellowknife uh, Canada in the Northwestern territories is now over. You had until uh, 12 o'clock your time and it's 12 o'clock your time, 10 after 12 your time to get the hell out of there because there's only one road out of there. It's just like, it's just like uh, you know, Maui too. Maui, uh, you know, Lahaina, there's one road in and out. There's one road in and out. And so, uh, you know, that's why people were burned alive in their car. Oh, it's just, it's tragic what's going on. And you can't hardly even keep up with it. I mean, and this particular uh, hurricane, you know what its name is? Hillary. Hurricane Hillary, everybody. And it's not, you know, MAGA, MAGA's gonna freak the F out. I mean, they're just going to lose their crap. They just are. You know, the odd Republican in uh, Los Angeles, they're just going to, you know, they're going to blame, uh, I don't know, they'll blame her is what they'll do. I mean, here are the Democrats trying to solve these problems of climate change, making like serious investments. Every single Republican votes no. Every time we say, hey, you know, uh, you know, this is, uh, it's on, it's happening, it's, it, you know, uh, not only is uh, the atmosphere heating up, not only are the oceans heating up, not only is, uh, you know, uh, uh, El Nino a thing this year, which is going to make it even worse. Uh, we should really do something about it. We should devote some money to, and put factories and change the name of the Rust Belt to the Battery Belt and start investing in uh, some of the most rural uh, poverty-stricken places. By the way, I have to tell you, 
you know, if you're in West Virginia, I know you voted for Trump. Why? I have no earthly idea. Do you know that Mingo County, which is like, a, you know, eaten up with uh, opioids and, and, and the whole, you know, deaths of despair thing? Uh, really, it's a, it's a thing. It's a big thing. Two thirds of uh, the county uh, of, uh, you know, in, in West Virginia, Mingo uh, is unemployed. Two thirds. So what did uh, Joe Biden do? What did he do? He actually decided that he was going to uh, have incentives for private investment to build a factory, a factory in Mingo, uh, uh, rural Mingo County, West Virginia. And that's happening. That's on. That's and it's creating 2000 construction jobs. It's a three billion dollar project uh, on a reclaimed coal mining site in Mingo County, West Virginia. And you got, you know, like uh, Joe Manchin trying to block the implementation of the Inf Inflation Reduction Act because he still wants his uh, few million a year that he makes uh, being a coal broker. It's so sad. It's so sick. But this uh, this particular, uh, you know, uh, package of, of investment in green energy is benefiting the most depressed areas of our nation. And hardly anybody there has heard anything about it how sick and twisted a ruse is this i mean a third of the population in mingo county is actually employed uh countless lives you can't even keep track of how many people uh have succumbed or you know their lives have been upended by opioid addiction that's number two and now all of a sudden you've got uh you know uh, uh adams it's called adams fork energy and CNX Resources. They are building the nation's largest clean production facility uh, there, a clean ammonia production facility there. $3 billion creating 2,000 uh, construction jobs uh, out of the $750 billion uh, you know, Inflation Reduction Act, the largest investment that this country has ever made in uh, U.S. history uh, to restructure our economy. And I swear to God, uh, you know, you still hear Fox News blaming anything but climate change on climate change, anything at all, anything that they could throw at it. Now they're actually blaming the investment in green jobs for what's going on in Maui. How do you even get there? Well, you have to twist your body and your mind into uh, positions that you've never even seen depicted in the Kama Sutra. P you know, positions you've never even seen in any yoga manual or in any game of Twister, no matter how drunk the uh, participants ever were. That's how much twisting of, you know, truth and fact uh, has to go into creating this fiction. And believe me, they're doing it. They're actually freaking doing it. Politics around climate change seems to be absolving people in charge of accountability. Well, first <laughs> off, the sirens went off for incoming missiles that never right. in, in came. Yeah. <laughs> then when they need sirens, they don't use them. Yeah, like in a nuclear disaster, yeah. you're supposed to go to higher ground. Yeah, there's That's something. He's arguing. There's a lot of stuff going on here, including <laughs> like why they waited on releasing the water and stuff like that. And a lot of it has to do with ideology. Uh, it sounds like, and when ideology? when one ideology becomes the overarching principle, then all the other problems underneath it become less vital, right? So you have 111 people right now, I think, have died, yeah. right? But let's focus on climate change. You see what happens there. It's like you have this horrible problem. All of these people died. But keep your eye on the big picture. The big picture is climate change. you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. This is, what they, this is exactly huh? the ideology behind people starving to death in USSR, dying in China. It's like what? focus on the revolution. Focus on the, the great promise of communism, the great leap what? forward. Just keep your, Who cares if people are dying? Okay, I, I can't even follow. Okay, can you? He's got to be the most obnoxious. No, it's not on even the obnoxious. I, I'm trying to follow Mr. Obnoxious there. I'm trying to fo you know, follow uh, Mr. Haha. Uh, he thinks he's really funny. Really? Uh, but I'm trying to follow his, his string of thoughts and trying to understand if I were a maggot how I would be interpreting his remark. I don't, if, you, if you're a maggot, uh, please feel free. It's Friday to call in and explain to me. What is he talking about when he says people in China are starving and communism is great and that's the same thing about what happened with fires in Maui? How does he even get there from that at all? I'm lost. <laughs>
all things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Here in Maui, the problem, it's not some amorphous thing. It's physics. If you have physics. power lines that are j- jangling all around and you have, un- you have cluttered dry grass underneath that doesn't get cut because the power companies have diverted all of their money over to... Uh, green energy proposals, pie in the sky nonsense, then of course you're going to have uh, wildfires. I don't know who that douchebag is, but um, you know, I see him sometimes. I see him over there on the uh, Fox News, you know, uh, saying that there's no such thing as climate change. It's pie in the sky. Green energy is bull crap, even though it's a multi trillion dollar marketplace that the United States would like to lead, you know, and that uh, for him is a bad investment. I don't know how they get there from here. I honestly don't know why they lie, except to say fossil fuels have got to be spending a, an extraordinary amount of money on commercials uh, over there. And their candidates are, uh, you know, counting on, uh, you know, the Koch brothers' money. I don't know, but you know money's changing hands in order for them to lie like this about how uh, the, the, the energy companies uh, didn't want to clear the grasses because they were investing in green new energy. What is wrong with people? Honestly, uh, there was a proposal in Hawaii for a $1.5 million investment in the legislature, which is where things like money get appropriated. I think we all know that from fourth grade civics. Well, we don't have that anymore. We don't want to teach our kids history. We don't want to teach them, uh, you know, African-American studies uh, because that's, you know, they actually say out loud now, African-American, you know, uh, studies are not, uh, uh, they're not American history. They actually say that out loud now. It's just, wow. But uh, I have a beautiful fitting end for what should happen to the racist. So I just uh, was thinking about it and looked it up. And it's just, mwah, it's beautiful. It's a great plan. But uh, I'll share it with you in a brief moment. But, I mean, this, this, this garbage-y thing. So $1.5 million was all it would have taken to actually go out and clean the grasses that are not indigenous, by the way, to Maui, that used to be eradicated through farming. But the land got so valuable because the rich people liked it so damn much that the land that used to grow pineapples, the land that used to grow sugarcane, the land that used to actually host uh, farming activities and such is now fallow. It's not productive. It's not doing anything because people want to invest and purchase that land and build their McMansions, if not their full-blown on that land, and they don't clean it. Okay, so the legislature was looking at spending $1.5 million, and uh, it died in committee. It was a democratically sponsored uh, piece of legislation, and uh, it didn't go anywhere. So that's kind of why you have, uh, you know, a problem with grasses that dry out in Maui and catch fire when, uh, you know, uh, the power lines start sparking down the highway, combined with, and this is what they leave out, 80-mile-an-hour winds as a result of a hurricane passing south of the island it's just it's such it's such um i don't know hateful kind of broadcasting like you really have to go out of your way to make this crap up for your viewers and then shovel it into their uh, you know diet it's not even spoon feeding them i mean you're, you're literally taking like a bulldozer and shoveling this crap down their throats you know so that they will uh actually be horrified I don't know when a factory is being built. Here's the thing about about this uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which makes the largest investment in green and renewable energy in this country, in the history of this country, in the history, in the history. Not that anybody uh, will ever get to learn it, but okay. So 90% of the announced money from the Inflation Reduction Act, 90% of the investments related to the sectors that are identified in the Inflation Reduction Act are in counties with below average weekly wages. Seriously, it's in counties where people aren't being paid, uh, you know, uh, uh, prevailing wages. You know, we were talking the other day about Davis Bacon. You know, I'm a dweeb like that. But that's where the the focus on building these factories is. It's literally 90% of the factories that are being built are being built, and this is an analysis that was done, that 
are below average wage earners in counties where people who aren't paid prevailing wages live. 80% are in counties with lower college graduation rates than the national average because we're going out of our way to make people's lives better, to make America better, to make life in this country better for people who feel rightly that they have been left behind, but they don't know by whom because they can't learn it. They don't teach it anymore. But it's Reaganomics, have a little look-see, okay? When everything got flipped on its head and they said, oh, no, 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 paying a man a decent wage isn't the way to grow the economy. Wages are too high, you know. So we have to make people's expectations as low as we can. And one of the things we can do is go look all over the world, as private industry does, for the lowest cost labor and move our factories over there. Well, if America has a problem with it, we'll lobby the government to make sure that not only can we do it, but we can get incentivized to do it. And then we can sell that the idea was you people were just taking too much money for yourselves. What you really need to do is give it to the wealthy. We need to do tax cuts for the uber rich, tax cuts for the corporations, and then it will trickle down to you. But right now, you selfish little bastards, you're all sitting there and in groups of people collectively bargaining, you know, and these companies don't stand a chance. They don't stand a chance because you're asking for pensions, you're asking for health care, you're asking for prevailing wages, and you live in rural America, and you should not be paid what somebody needs to be paid in New York City. And they sold that crap for 40 years, literally sold it, and they just did it in the last administration too, right in front of your freaking face. Well, enough of that, okay? So now these, these communities who have been underinvested in and underperforming as a result of the lack of investment in their rural communities are going to reap huge benefits from the Inflation Reduction Act. New plants will bring people into the labor force who previously have been left behind. Because the jobs that were available at good wages were either not in your area They were union jobs in union towns like, uh, you know, New York, like Pennsylvania, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, certain, uh, you know, car factories in Ohio, right? And also, and also the really good paying jobs were in the financial industries because that's what America decided to focus on, money. Well, we're looking back now and saying, hmm, you know, if we actually made investments in uh, sectors in counties with above average poverty rates and above average child poverty rates, like Fayetteville, Ohio, about 40 miles uh, southwest of Columbus, which has a child poverty rate of almost 25%, which is well above the national average of 15%, then all of a sudden, you know, we might actually see growth in the economy and we might actually see consumer activity pick up And in a consumer-driven economy, when 70% of all GDP is consumer-driven, that could be good. That could be, like, really good for us. So Honda and LG Energy, they're building in Marysville, Ohio, an electric car plant. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. I don't know why they let uh, Jessica Tarlov on uh, the five. I don't know why they include her, because every time she talks to them, um, she hands them their head on a silver platter and shows them how ridiculously empty their heads are, okay, and explains to them that, uh, you know, Biden's a really good president. But we started with over 9% inflation at this point last year. Now it's at 3.2%. Before you say it's still too high grocery prices, I get all of it. (laughs) I, too, eat and go to the grocery store. (laughs) But we do have the lowest inflation of the G7 in general. This is a global problem, just much like the issue with energy prices was when Russia invaded Ukraine, which had nothing to do with the Green No Deal, which hasn't even been enacted. But there are these (laughs) markers out there. Like, if everything is so terrible, for instance, why does Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, all say we're not going to have a recession now when they thought that we would? Why is the unemployment rate so low? Why are we gaining this many jobs? I mean, (laughs) there are anchors 
We've been on our own network talking about this completely flabbergasted live on air when the jobs numbers come in. They say, oh, my God, this is incredible what we're seeing, <laughs> revising up by hundreds of thousands. And then, so you're even surprised when it goes well. <laughs> I'm just imitating an anchor that was surprised. I <laughs> knew no it was happening. Us. This one was. Um, but also, the Inflation Reduction Act has had a lot of tangible results that Republicans are really happy with. Like Tim Scott, for instance, has been bragging about the investment from this company, Redwood Materials, mm -hmm. coming to South Carolina. When you ask Redwood Materials why they came, they said the benefits of the Inflation Reduction Act. Exactly. That's what it did. It gave incentives to companies. Uh, that's exactly what it did. And, uh, you know, this is called regulation that's written into the bill. And what it actually regulates, what it says is, uh, it says we will give you bonus dollars, okay? We will actually incentivize you with bonus dollars if you build, uh, you know, uh, clean energy, uh, you know, uh, electric vehicle hubs, or you build battery plants, or you build a, 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 a chip factory, or you do solar panels, or you build uh, wind towers, or you build the blades for the wind turbines, or you have a bearings company and it's made in America, whatever. We will give you an incentive if you locate that factory in low income, high unemployment areas. Now, why would we do that? Why would we do that? Because what we, uh, you know, we love the poor or we're trying to help somebody. Yes, probably. But Here's the reason I give them, because they don't want to hear about the poor, okay? Anything that helps poor people for them is a absolute downer. It's a bad idea. Why are you trying to help them? Why don't they just lift themselves up from their bootstraps? You know, what's the dealio with them? Why are you always focused on that? You know, well, obviously, because we live in a consumer-driven economy, and the more consumerism that we have, the better off the economy is. Okay, but that's it. Here's what I tell them, and you could tell them this, too, because this will just uh, deflate all their hatred of, against poor people, even though they're probably one of them at this point. You tell them that we need to locate these jobs in places where there aren't any worker shortages. Uh, because you know that there are lots of worker shortages in, uh, you know, big cities. They can't find workers. They can't find people to bartend. They can't find people to serve food. They can't find people to, uh, you know, uh, uh, do some stuff that, uh, you know, th there's just, there's shortages. So if we went to places where two-thirds of the people, like Mingo County, are unemployed, guess what we're likely to find? Workers. So just tell them that. Because you know that although maggots want to say they want to make America great again and that the forgotten man is, you know, every time we remember not to forget the forgotten man, <laughs> they get very agitated and very upset. And they want to know why do we feed them? They want to know why do we clothe them? They want to know why do we let them live? They want to know, you know, like, why do we uh, care about them? Why do we, you know, whatever. Uh, and obviously, this this particular round of legislation that we were able to get, even though we don't have a majority in the House of Representatives, and even though we don't have nearly 60 votes in the United States Senate, we were still able to get big legislation done. And one of the really big pieces that we got done, not just the Chips and Science Act, the Infrastructure Act, that was bipartisan, okay? But the Inflation Reduction Act is a beauty of, a, of an investment. It's, it's really, it, it, you know the expression, kill two birds with one stone? And maybe you couldn't visualize, like, how would you throw the stone and then ricochet off of one bird's head and dash into another bird's head? Like, how did you do? How? So uh, that's kind of violent. Why don't you just imagine that what we're doing here with the Inflation Reduction Act is killing multiple birds with one stone. We're innovating our way into the leadership role in a green energy economy for the world, not just for us, but for the world. So thereby uh, affecting climate change to change it back, okay, to have less uh, greenhouse gases, less uh, CO2, less methane, you know, less pollution, and, uh, you know, actually enrich ourselves and build back, for lack of a, another term, build back better communities that were left behind about 40, 50 years ago. 
bonus dollars for that, right? I, so, I mean, honestly, don't even tangle with them because they're so small-minded and they're so, you know, interested in just bullying their way or yelling their way or threatening their way or saying that the way to, you know, unforget the forgotten is to punch someone in the face. I mean, this is their theory of operation, right? All you need to do is punch someone in the face. All you need to do is carry them out on a stretcher. All you need to do is be violent. All you need to do is overthrow your government. All you need to do is pretend that Donald Trump Trump wasn't in it for himself and that everybody like Steve Mnuchin wasn't in it for themselves, that Jared Kushner wasn't in it for himself, that Ivanka wasn't in it for herself, you know, that somehow, somewhere along the line, something would trickle down to you, which it never did, uh, but that they are the great saviors of the forgotten man, even though they had four years and forgot to remember you. And here we are just a couple years into a different kind of priority set, a different kind of building, a different kind, you know, we're not making Mexico pay for any of our building, okay? And where we're building is where people actually need things built, high unemployment areas, rural places, places where people are below average, uh, below the national average for college graduation, I'm all about that because I didn't graduate college, as you know. So, you know, you could, you could say that, uh, you know, uh, I'm part of the elitism and blah, 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 all you want. I'm just a, you know, regular Brooklyn girl. Okay, that's what I am. But ov- obviously, the investment here is paying off. Obviously, it's paying off in a lot of different arenas, not just... GDP, American, not just making things in America, not just switching roles with China. China, they make things, they export them to us. We're switching that, we're flipping that script. We're saying, no, we're gonna make things and we're gonna export them to China. And if you look at China's economy right now, now's the time. Now's the time to go full bore. Now's the time to do American exports. China's economy is not doing well. Most of the G7 isn't doing great. Only we are. Hmm. Wonder how. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. It to is. speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Yes, I'm speaking over the uh, voiceover. Uh, over and over. Uh, it's Friday. We're allowed to be a little nuts. Uh, you know what kind of Friday it is, everybody? It's $5 Friday. It's $5 freaking Friday. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, free speech TV... You know, yesterday, I forgot to tell you, yesterday was nonprofit day for nonprofit businesses. It was a day to support them. And uh, we didn't say jack about that. And that was my bad. So it's on me. Uh, let's make it up today. Okay, $5 Friday. So if you start a $5 recurring donation of Free Speech TV today, the first 50 people will get a lovely little mystery box in the mail, um, and you'll be doing a good thing to support independent media. If you're watching us on DirecTV Channel 348, or you got us on Dish Network 9415, or you're watching us on Apple, or your Roku Stick, or your uh, Fire Stick, or whatever it is, just know that there are people that actually make sure that these shows get there so you can imbibe free. That's why uh, it's, uh, you know, something that uh, doesn't have any commercials on it. It's something that doesn't take any political money, and uh, it depends on you. So for Nonprofit Thursday, which I forgot to mention, we should have mentioned, and then you would have been able to support. Uh, But today is $5 Friday, so start a new $5 donation. And, oh, hey, by the way, if you already do a $5 donation and you increase your donation by $5, you will also go to heaven. And get a mystery box if you're one of the first 50 people to dial us up at 877-378-8669 or visit us online at freespeech.org. It's an org, see, because it's not a com. It's not a commercial enterprise. It's a uh, not-for-profit. That's how you get the org. So freespeech.org or text 44321. Text the letters FSTV, Free Speech TV, to 44321. We will send you a secure link. You can say, I would like to become a $5 member, or I would like to increase my $5 recurring donation by $5, and we will say, thank you so much. So there you have it. All right. um, So 
obviously we're killing multiple birds with one stone. One so well, actually it's two stones, maybe three, because we had three big bills, three big packages, three big pieces of legislation. The infrastructure uh, package that was bipartisan, we'll say, uh, and that is to repair roads, bridges, tunnels, uh, you know, existing uh, infrastructure, create roadways that are safe for our giant business that we anticipate having exporting stuff. So ports need to be built, roads to the ports, right? We need all kinds of infrastructure to support the kind of export uh, that we would like to, uh, you know, engage in on behalf of the American people. And it is happening. It actually is, even though Fox is going to go kicking and screaming into irrelevancy. And so is Donald Trump, by the way. Uh, you know, uh, one day you'll just uh, forget that you even supported him. That will happen. Mark my words, because it happened with W. OK, been through this, been there, done that. And, and W, you know, for as, uh, you know, harmless as you think W was compared to Trump. Oh, no. W killed a million people without a reason. A million dead Iraqis. Just saying. Genocide is a thing. And, uh, you know, people forgot that they ever even supported him at this point. So I'm hoping that, you know, 20 years from now, you'll forget that you ever supported Donald Trump and people will forgive you. Boy, I tell you what, I said the same. I had this very conversation with a buddy of mine two days ago. And he just, yeah, yeah. And I said, I said, man, they're just going to crawl right back, uh, back from these opinions like they did with Bush. And he said, you know what, this time Facebook is going to get them. It's going to last forever. People take no. screenshots. Uh, he's making sense. Oh, oh, you mean it will locate them or well, you know, hold like, them accountable well, you know, in hold that Hold them one? accountable. When somebody says, well, I didn't say that. I wasn't about that. I didn't like that hate. I wasn't in there on that. Well, it says right here a thousand times a day anywhere you could <laughs> post that you did. Yeah, radio never had that kind of a stickiness, you know, the way that, because, you know, we would play phone calls of people that, you know, would call us up and say, I never supported him. And we'd go, oh, was this not you? Because we were local, and so it wasn't hard to uh, find those people and identify them as being front-running phonies, you know, <laughs> in their newfound love for, uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama and democracy. Yeah, it wasn't really that hard. But anyway, uh, so I digress. So, you know, we had these three great big packages of things. And these big packages, the Infrastructure Package, the Chips and Science Act, and the Inflation Reduction Act, are doing so many things with three stones, okay? It's employing people in areas where there is underemployment, where you have massive unemployment, where you have two-thirds of the people living in a county or living in a, a section, a district of a state where people haven't worked in years, okay? And they're not college educated, okay? Maybe they're even high school dropout. These jobs are good paying wage jobs that don't require college degrees and will actually, they're making the investment in that particular community because they're being uh, incentivized to do so. And the official reason between me and you is going to be there are worker shortages in certain areas, and so we don't want to have to deal with building a factory and then having to find workers in places that are experiencing worker shortages. So building in places where there's high unemployment only adds to the ability to hire labor, and that's why we're doing it. Okay. So that's one stone. The other one is we're going to lead the world in exports again for the stuff that we freaking invented. You know, we invented microchips and we shrunk them down to, to the size of, of, of a thumbnail. And then the uh, you know, powers that be incentivized these companies to offshore their factories <laughs> and actually gave them money to do that, to go look around the world for the cheapest labor they could find. Oh, and they did. Because when you're making something really tiny, I don't care if it's a perfect little sewing stitch or it's a microchip, you want little children's fingers. You want the little teeny tiny, you know, uh, prepubescent fingers working on your project. Oh, that's so disgusting. And that's what happened. So we want to lead the world in exports. We also want to strengthen our supply chain because, you know, COVID actually exposed the lunacy of making PPE in China. <laughs> the idiocracy of, of, of literally betting on, you know, a supply chain that was, uh, you know, uh, what, nine days away by boat. Stupid, right? And the big kahuna for those of us who give a rat's ass about this stuff is climate change. Actually weighing in in a meaningful way to beat back 
the amount of heat that we are putting into the atmosphere to get back, you know, some sort of a, 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 a jet stream that we recognize would be good. <laughs> Do you know, I mean, this is the heat dome thing. What the hell? What is that now? All of a sudden we're going, oh, well, there's a heat dome, you know, and uh, so it's like 109 in Seattle or it's 109 in Portland. Really? Yeah, it's 109 degrees in British Columbia. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's what I'm saying. You know, when you have people who don't take money from fossil fuels or people who don't take money from, uh, you know, uh, uh, the normal crowd <laughs> that has had their way with us for 40 years, all of a sudden you get new ideas, don't you? You get new investments in new places and new industries and new wages and a new thriving economy in some places that were, oh, I don't know, forgotten. And trust me, yelling at China and then praising Xi isn't going to solve any of the problems that we have. Neither is, uh, you know, uh, uh, screaming about fire and fury and then saying that you fell in love with Kim Jong-un. You know what uh, the president of the United States today is doing? You know what President Biden is doing right now on the TV? Uh, he's in, in, in uh, the woods in Camp David, which is just stunning. OK, it looks really good today. Uh, with the president of South Korea and Japan announcing a new agreement between us, Japan, and South Korea. Do you know how hard that was to do? Do you have any idea? So let me just, uh, in a sentence, I guess I could explain it this way. Japan used to be the colonizing daddy of South Korea. And now all of a sudden you got, uh, you know, brotherly love going on between South Korea and Japan. You, you see, it's, it's this kind of let's do what's possible. Let's explore what is possible to make the United States safe and secure rather than uh, falling in love with Kim Jong-un and saying, because I loved him, he would lose his nuclear ambitions. That is not possible. That was never possible. That was never going to happen. But it was very entertaining. I'll give you that was fabulous, uh, you know, tweet storms of absolute asinine bullcrap. But fun, oh my God, fun. Did it solve any of our problems? No. Could it ever? No. Was any of that pro No. Threatening China wasn't going to do jack crap either. But building alliances <laughs> will do everything you want it to do on safety, security, economic interests, new supply chains, new friendships in the world. Those things are all possible. And Joe Biden is a person of the possible, not the impossible. Not the, not the Trump, I'll just make noise and entertain people and get nothing done impossible. So we're good. <laughs> We believe that all men are created equal to the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream to be. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach Show. Turn up your mind. Well, of course, it's $5 Friday, you bastards, but I can't wait till Monday because Monday we're going to get the exonerating uh, materials. Uh, Donald Trump is going to have this massive, massive, uh, you know, a press conference, and he is going to show us 100 foolproof pages that exonerate him of any crimes all the time. Nothing, nothing is going to stick to him because he has the goods. He has the evidence. He has the proof. Just hours after Trump was named as a co-defendant in that sprawling Fulton County, Georgia, election interference, he promised to release a, quote, large, complex, detailed, but irrefutable report on the presidential election fraud, which took place in Georgia. Trump promised to release the report at a major news conference this coming Monday, the Yay! 21st, at his Bedminster, major. New Jersey golf, golf club, and he claimed it would cause all charges against him to be dro dropped, and it would be a complete exoneration. Well, that but sounds dramatic, Jonathan. I, I say, and I, one wonders why he waited two and a half years to release this information that would have exonerated him and given him the state of Georgia. Yeah, well. But it was coming Monday. Yes. Well, Joe. Yeah. It's not. What? It's not. 
well, oh, but we waited three and a half years or something like that to um, actually hear this. And he's apparently been collecting all this information all these many years. And now that he's been charged with these crimes, he's going to have a massive press conference where he is going to exonerate himself. He's going to show everybody, including, you know, people that would like to see him die in prison, uh, why he should not even set foot in a prison. He's going to produce irrefutable evidence that he did nothing wrong. Uh, yesterday, Trump took to his Truth Social page to say that we won't be seeing that report. It won't be what? released to the public. But instead, oh. his lawyers would prefer to use it in legal filings. Therefore, <laughs> the news conference was no longer necessary. All right, book him, Dano. <laughs> but, but, but Randy, he's so reliable. And the things he say, you can, you can just take it right to but the bank. But he said he was going to, you know, usually when he says he's going to have a rally or something like that, it actually happens. Yes, with bad 80s music, but it happens. Right now, he's saying he's going to have a press con, and that, and they don't even happen, even if they're nonsensical, even if uh, you know all he talks about is toilets and showers and punching people in the face. I mean, at least he showed up. He used to show up, right? He used to be entertaining. Now he doesn't even show up. What do you mean he's not showing up? What do you mean? Irrefutable evidence, he said. Irref. <laughs> I can hear Maga crying already. I, I really can't. I mean, it's just like, uh, unbelievable. you know who must be very upset about the fact that uh, the lawyers have told Donald Trump, shut the F up now, okay? Everything you say will be used against you in a actual court of law, one of four court courts of law that have active live cases against you, okay? Stop it already. Stop it. He was out there tweeting or socialing or post it, I don't even know what to call it anymore, uh, that the rigors, oh, what a coincidental word he picked, uh, the rigors uh, were going to be exposed by this irrefutable evidence that he was going to present to each and every one of us on Monday in this unbelievable, you know, wide-reaching press conference of his. I guess the rigors are going to be real relieved now. That he's not having his press. So in that case, okay, I say just let's book him. Let's just book him. Now, remember at the beginning of the show I said I had this uh, beautiful idea of like what justice should and could look like? So guess what I did? I started looking up this, uh, this Fulton County Jail to see, uh, you know, like where it is and like, do, will he show up there to, you know, because listen, he's not going to debate. I think everybody understands that he's not going to debate because, you know, why would he even bother to show up for anything anymore? Um, so he's too chicken crap or he's just, you know, not in the mood or he's, you know, uh, got nothing going for, I don't know, because, you know, if he thinks that he can get on a stage and beat the, the, the crap out of uh, Chris Christie, who's been, you know, accusing him of being a criminal, or he thinks he can get on a stage and beat the crap out of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ron DeSantis, who he thinks is disloyal to him, and he could prevail in a fight like that, of course he would show up. Of course he would, because he lives for that. He lives to, you know, hurt people. He lives to be cruel to people. He lives to be, you know, uh, like a fourth grader and call people names. He loves to do that, like a little Marco and Sleepy Joe. And, you know, I mean, if he thought that that's, uh, he could still get away with this kind of uh, crap with the Republican uh, candidates uh, on a debate, he would show up. He would. But he's not showing up. He's not. Okay? And so... People were talking about, oh, well, what's he going to do Wednesday then to counter-program this debate since he's refusing to show up anywhere? He doesn't want to have his Monday press conference where he was going to exonerate uh, himself in front of everybody, make fools out of Jack Smith, make a fool out of, uh, you know, uh, 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 Fonnie Willis, make a fool out of Alvin Bragg. You know, he was just going to, you know, show the whole country how political they all are and that they really didn't have any, uh, you know, prosecutable crimes and that they didn't have any evidence and that, you know, they had a lot of ideas about what they were going to do to me. But they had no it's like Rudy. You remember what Rudy used to say when he would go and he would lie to state legislatures or he would file a case in court or he would go to Rusty Bowers in Arizona, the Speaker of the House, and he would say to him, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we got, uh, you know, so much to show you about, uh, you know, vote flipping and dead people and blah, blah. And Rusty Bauer said, do you have names? 
And Rudy said, yes. And he said, okay, and do you know, like, uh, you know, that these names are dead people? Yes, I do. And they waited and waited and waited, and there was never any evidence. And Rusty Bowers finally said to him, you know, where's the evidence? And Rudy was forced to admit, we have a lot of theories. We just don't have any evidence. (laughs) And that's, uh, you know, kind of what Trump's dealing with over here, right? He has no evidence that uh, would show that, you know, anything was rigged or anything was fraudulent or anything was, you know, uh, uh, deserving of uh, being held up or overturned or whatever. So, you know, it's just, it's uh, so he's not showing up. So I thought, well, what's he going to do to counter program? Well, I thought maybe he would surrender himself to the Fulton County Jail. So, oh, let's see where that is. Where is that place? Well, I look it up and oh my God, there are like almost entire encyclopedias written about this place. It's called uh, the Rice uh, Rice Street Jail, the Fulton County Jail. This is a gulag. This is a disgusting hellhole of a place. Dude, I, didn't, I had no earthly idea how bad this place was. I knew something about Colin Kaepernick paying for an autopsy of one of the inmates because oh, this is so vile. If, if, if you're squeamish or you're, you know, you can't handle bug stories or something like that, just put your fingers in your ear and say, la, 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 I can't hear you. Okay, th- there was an inmate there who was literally found eaten alive, eaten alive by bugs, by lice. And met, you know, like uh, uh, fleas and stuff. Okay, and uh, the jail was so uh, non-transparent about this that Colin Kaepernick literally paid the medical ex- a medical examiner to do an autopsy on this uh, kid. And and they're they're kids there because it's like gang kids. That's where they send them. Uh, and they found that the guy literally was eaten to death by bugs. Although the jail denied it. There's another guy also that died uh, that way, okay? And and there's photos in a lot of these, uh, you know, meticulously researched, long-form journalistic articles. This These places are, I mean, it, it would be hard to even, you know, accept that this happens on American soil. It should be hard for us to accept, but it's, it's, it's literally happening. And that's where they all have to surrender. And I say, for all the racism, for all the hostility, for all the hatred they spewed, and for all the requests that they not be treated any differently in our two-tier system of justice, that we treat these indicted felons (laughs) the same way. And we put them in the Fulton County Jail. Watched it on TV. All things Randy at randyrhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. So you see that right there? That is a cell in this disgusting filth of a prison, okay? It's not a prison, it's a jail, okay? This is a county jail. And I think that this might be a photograph of the uh, mental help wing cell where uh, LaShawn Thompson's body was found completely covered in lice and bed bugs, and he was found dead in the mental health wing of this particular jail. Just thought I would show you what America is capable of. No, Randy, I don't know how many of our uh, watchers, viewers, listeners know about the show 60 Days In, but uh, seasons three and four were both set in Fulton County Jail specifically because of how rough and rugged and entertaining. It's filthy. It's and, not and, rough and rugged. Right, yeah, that, well, that's my point is when you watch it, you will get to see firsthand how dirty, uh, how dilapidated, how antiquated, violent it is how how badly the uh, inmates are ignored and their needs not met. It's really jarring, uh, and you can check it out season three and four of that. And what's it called? Sixty days in, where a group of regular people go in with a cover story and stay sixty days in in a jail. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so oh. yeah, you could really get a good feel for uh, the accommodations waiting. Trump and Giuliani. Oh, and see, company. and I was going to recommend Jury Duty, but that's very funny. Did you watch that? That's, that was good. Jury Duty is amazing. I don't know I how much it. you want to talk about this, but Jury Duty is. <laughs> awesome it is transcendent television it is that faux documentary is so good 
So that's one of uh, Jessica's friends that actually created uh, Jerry Duty. She, you remember I was telling you the story how the writers and, you know, see, this is how you know Hurricane Hillary is not a scripted, uh, you know, apocalyptic movie because the writers and the, uh, you know, uh, 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 the production people are all on strike, right? So uh, this is like natural. But Jury Duty, I, I told you, uh, Jessica has a friend and uh, she's a writer and she was on the picket line and she said Emmy nominated and on food stamps. That's who I was referring to, okay? She's actually in jury duty. She's in it. She's the, um, I'll just give you a little clue. She's the security guard at the, uh, you know, where, where they go through uh, to be, uh, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, magnetometer? Yeah, she's the security guard. Anyway, uh, I digress. So 60 days in, apparently seasons two and three take place in this disgusting filth of a prison, this, this hellhole. And, uh, you know, I, I want to combine two thoughts now. Stay with me, everybody. I know it's Friday, and you may have started early, but okay. Um, so one of the things that the Trump lawyers have put forward for our uh, perusal, for our, um, you know, uh, uh, eyeballs to uh, mull over, our brains to think over, is their trial date. They have proposed their trial date. When John Loro and the uh, Team Trump lawyers feel that they will be ready to present their case in any uh, and all of the uh, Georgia, um, is it Georgia? No, January 6th. In any uh, of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, answers to the January 6th case, right? They feel that they will be ready to argue their defense to a jury of Donald Trump's peers in April of 2026. I mean, why don't they just stand there and uh, flip off, uh, you know, the judge uh, and, and just say, F you, honey, uh, you know, we're not uh, we're not going to agree to any trial until, uh, you know, uh, three years from now. So are you saying that Donald Trump is trying to outlive these indictments because he'll be 80 by then? Or <laughs> are you trying to say he'll be president by then and therefore there will be no chance to try a sitting president? I don't know which it is, but that's the uh, date that they are proposing. April of 2026. Well, me being the little lemonade maker, they want to hand me lemons and tell me that they won't be ready to present their defense uh, to a jury until 2026. So I say, okay, we accept. We accept your date. But because Donald Trump is intimidating witnesses and because he's threatening judges and because he can't stop, uh, you know, posting and because he's canceling his, uh, you know, his big uh, press conferences where he was going to show us how wrong we were and he's not debating and he's not otherwise, you know, engaged in this uh, presidential election cycle. He just refuses to participate in anything to do with running for president except for grifting off of the indictments with the people who are least able to make a recurring $35 donation, just saying. So why don't we do this? Let's say, let's have him surrender on Wednesday to upend the big Republican debate. Okay, we get it. He's counter-programming. Fine. And then he wants to do an interview with Tucker Carlson while the debate is on. Well, that'd be a rip-roaring Wednesday. I mean, yeah, sure. Why not? I'm in the media. I'll go for it. I'll do it. I'll, I'll be there. I'll, although I don't know, how do you watch Tucker Carlson anymore if you don't uh, actually have Twitter anymore? Because it's become a cesspool, much like the Fulton County Jail. So let's all agree that he can play whatever game he wants on Wednesday. But then he also, when he surrenders, when he surrenders on Wednesday to upend the news cycle because it's the Republican debate day, let's remand him to prison pending trial, which, according to him and his attorneys, will be April of 2026. Oh! Yes! See how elegantly difficult problems can be solved? <laughs> Who's with me? Dean in L.A. Oh, you just stole my thunder. <laughs> it's a beauty, right? I just went, oh, this could not be more perfect. Yeah. Remand him in custody and say, let's honor your Court uh, date. 2026 date. Oh, Maybe, you know what? Let's make it 2036. 
<laughs> it has to be safe. Yeah, let's just agree that, you know, it would be like reading no. War and Peace, uh, you know, 400 times a day, which is their argument. And there's no way that we could ingest all of this material, even though it's done by computer, as you know, because, you know, even control. F- I can't wait to see the, uh, uh, the the crowd along the street there for this uh, amazing circus train that's going to show up. On what? Do you, do you think there's be- 19 more of them or 18 more? 18 more. Yeah, 18 more of them. So. I know. It'll be fun. It'll be It'll really be look fun. like the circus car showing up. <laughs> the clown car, yeah, of the circus. <laughs> well, it's that, or maybe another example would be maybe the, it, I consider the Trump train to be more like the, the train in uh, Back to the Future 2, where Doc has just piled in so much coal to get that thing up that it explodes. <laughs> well, I, I want to say it's something like, uh, you know, rhymes with chitty, chitty, bang, bang, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is what it is. That's okay. the kind of training. You win. Is. Thank you. Thank you very much. I won Twitter, everybody. I won Twitter. Uh, no, I won my show is what I won. I'm not posting anything on that ridiculous X marks the spot where the helicopter lands. I don't know what that is. I really, I don't even understand what he hopes to do with that particular platform. However, yeah, let's accept his court date. Let's say April 2026. Let's write it down. Let's accept it. Let's sign off on it. And then when he surrenders in the Rice Street, Fulton County jail, which is just a pile of filth and bugs and and, 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 and neglect and violence and overcrowding with metal toilets. You know, they tried to put porcelain toilets in that place once and they bro- they were all broken like in a day. Right. That's why everything's metal. And uh, let's just put him there, pending trial. Let's just do it. Let's say yes. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy. Call 561 270 3844. 561 270 3844. All right, everybody. Thank you for your time and attention today. It is $5 Friday. I appreciate anything that you can do in the way of $5, whether it's you already give $5 a month and you'd like to increase your $5 recurring monthly donation by $5, or you've never, you've never pledged $5. You need to pledge $5 right now. 877-378-8669. That will get you a live happy peppy person in Denver, Colorado. That is where the people who get these shows that you depend on, that you love, that you are, you know, loyal to each and every day to the Direct TV channel 348, to the Dish Networks 9415, to Apple TV, to Roku, to Sling, to all the places that you watch us. You know, people have to actually get it there. And that's what they do in Denver. So if you would like to talk to one of those great people there, and they are great people, just dial that phone, 877-378-8669. Tell them $5 Friday. I'm in. I'd like to do $5. Or do it online at freespeech.org. We're an org because we're not for profit. And we depend on you. Uh, Not commercials, not corporations, not political money. No, just you. Or use your phone and text to 44321, the letters, FSTV, Free Speech TV. And we'll send you a, a secure link, and you can make your $5 donation. You can make it recurring. You could stop it anytime you want. If you already do $5, make it $5 more. And uh, we say thank you so much. Brother David in Kansas. Mm-hmm. Hi. I hear that train coming. It's coming down the track because all my irrefutables took too long to unpack. Oh, I'm back in Fulton County. The bugs are hungry now. Mm. And just watch that black ink running down Rudy's sweaty brow. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I did something while I was on hold. Um, nice. So mine, yeah, I, was, I, mine was the devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a vote to steal. He was in a bind because <laughs> he was way behind. He was willing to make a deal. See? Yeah. Good. <laughs> they, oh, they're just, they, they write themselves. They do. Just, they do. <sighs> It's five dollar fry in Fahrenheit felons in Fulton after following Bonnie Friday. Ah! <laughs> um, 
I love the idea of the, 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 the let's yeah let's remand him till 2026 because by that time it's Parisis will have finally kicked in. Right, and, they want know. to play. Let's play. Okay, they think they're playing some game here. They think that yes. the American people aren't the, the the deserving of a speedy trial. They think that we don't have a right, right. to know whether our mm-hmm. president was a crook or not. We, you know, or try to you know uh, subvert the free and fair election or try to overthrow oh. his own government. They think we don't have a right to a speedy trial. They got another think common you want to play this game let's play let's play we accept your court date of april 2026 but you're remanded to the fulton county jail uh, pending trial from your mouth to the cosmos here sister and let them see whether they can find it within their reading brains to move it up a little bit yeah 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 i I, i'm I'm totally down with it i'm also totally down with jury duty oh Oh, yeah, so it's, 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 it's and, and Jessica knows the one who plays the the guard, yeah, the yeah, the, yeah. the court guard. Oh, yeah, that is so yeah, cool. Yeah, Marsden will win the Emmy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is his best work. As wild Marsden, as that sounds, yeah, yeah. this is his best performance. Oh, he, they're all so good. They're all so good. They're all so good. I, I don't yeah. want to give away the ending, but I have to say, you know, as as crazy an idea as it was, the way they pulled it off was so beautiful and so seamless. Oh. But oh. I just want people to understand it also has a very good message at the end. The pay- yes, indeed. The payoff is so worth it. I mean, it's I really agree. all around goodness. You know? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And things like and that we- don't happen all the time. You know, they just don't. No, right. but that's what we have you for because there are still more of us. <laughs> and there are gorgeous girdles out there for everybody. What a great segue <laughs> that was. <laughs> that was beautiful. Love you always. Thank you. Ah. Uh, Stunning. All right, Eileen in Pennsylvania. Hi, Randy. I'm such a big fan of yours. You get me through every day. How big are I'm you, so... Eileen? <laughs> <laughs> so big that no. So, so big so that on my size label, there's a number and a letter. <laughs> there you go. Boom, boom. <laughs> I had a rare sighting last night. Oh yeah. Something positive about Joe Biden on the evening news. Oh. There's a shipbuilding place in Louisiana. They were down to like 100 employees. They usually build, you know, oil rigs and stuff like that. And so they're slowly dying off. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden they're building these ships for wind turbines. They're massive and they pull up to the wind turbine and out comes like a walkway and they can just walk over to it. So the once dying company is now going from 100 employees to 600 employees. See, that's what I'm telling you. And and this is... Yeah, it's it's wonderful, but no one knows it. Okay, no, no, uh, uh-uh. I don't know what the media's deal is. I don't know why they don't want to celebrate, uh, you know, this man. I don't know why they they don't, you know, they, uh, because why? He's not the greatest speaker. He's not the most entertaining right. clown car you ever, you know, uh, saw come down the pike. Uh, the man, uh-huh. the man is totally in it to win it for the American people. He believes in the forgotten guy. He never forgot what his dad went through. He never forgot what his family went through. He never forgot right. that they had to move out of Scranton and that his family had to move to Delaware without dad. Dad had to stay behind. I mean, you know, look, the the idea that he tells the same stories over and over and over again. <laughs> I mean, come on, we all have grandparents, right? Yes. So, right. So I mean, but the amount of of good that's actually happening. You would think every once in a while they would want to part from Donald Trump being a criminal and cover that the forgotten man is now remembered. Do you know? Yes, and they're having such high-paying jobs. The people were ecstatic. The ship owner, the company owner, was just like beaming from ear to ear. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't know. believe it. I'm like, oh, I never heard of that. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, ah. It is. It is a great idea. And it's actually working. And people are, uh, you know, private money is being incentivized by right. our government to do that, to do that. Yes. And, yeah. And in, in places where uh, wages were low or in places where there was high unemployment and in places where uh, people don't have college degrees because. Yes. Th- right. And it's working. It's actually happening. It's on. So thank you, all Eileen. those people are going to be out of work and now they're very happy. So I thought I'd share that with you. I appreciate it. I really do. And thank you and Brett for everything you do. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Brett. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Have You're a very good welcome. weekend. Get the Corona's ready. Thank you. Oh, yeah, exactly. But it's Corona premiere these days because, you know, 2.5 carbs could have a whole bunch. of. But anyway, yeah, I mean, uh, this is really happening. 86,000 new jobs in manufacturing. You, you know, you're talking about 207 uh, projects right now just starting. 
207 new projects just starting now, just starting. And it's all because of the Inflation Reduction Act. And and the idea that there it's it's like this show, Jury Duty, okay? I love when you get more than one thing out of a thing. Do you know what I mean? So jury duty you get you get hysterical, you get a lot of laughs, you get a new concept, and at the end it has a, a message that's also uh, like really uplifting. It's really good. Well, it's the same thing with this, uh, you know, Inflation Reduction Act. Believe it or not, you have a new way of doing things, a new way of investing, a new way of attracting private money, and a new place where you're putting it. You're putting it in places that were forgotten. You're putting it in places that were left behind. You're putting it in places where there were deaths of despair. You're putting it in places where people don't have college degrees, right? In rural America, in red states, and it's gonna, it's starting to have a happy ending. What's wrong with that? Why can't America, you know, celebrate that? Why can't we be happy about that decision? Why can't we be cheering on good old Joe? Oh, that's right. Because he's a bad speaker. Okay. Clear. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. They're trying to do so much, and the only thing is the Democrats have done even worse, but they control the House and all that, and so they can do that to Trump. Why did he get indicted? (laughs) Because the Democrats don't like him. I guess I really don't know. They're just trying to dig up stuff so they can bring it up so that he doesn't run again. Because he's not a politician, he is a businessman. (laughs) They don't want him out there again. Why has he been indicted? Uh, Just for different allegations. I just think the Democrats are coming after him so they can get him out of the election. The Democrats are coming after him so they can get him out of the election. The man has 91 felony charges, 91 felony counts. His henchmen, they're all part of a scheme to overthrow your vote, yours in Iowa, people like you. Even though, well, I voted for him, so it wasn't me. Oh, so it's okay that it's me? Is that okay? That's okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, No. Listen, the guy uh, is is dirty. The guy is real dirty. He's like he was running a criminal enterprise in the White House. And Steve Bannon, who was also, uh, you know, (laughs) indicted and found guilty. Trump had to pardon him. I mean, can you imagine if Joe Biden had to pardon Hunter Biden? Just that one person. Can you imagine like what would go on in MAGA world if Joe Biden pardoned Hunter Biden? Well, Donald Trump pardoned Steve Bannon. Donald Trump pardoned uh, 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 Roger Stone. Donald Trump pardoned Paul Manafort, his campaign manager. I mean, what do you all forget all this crap? Okay, but anyway, uh, it's so interesting. And and they're go, oh well, Congress is doing it. Congress is doing it. We don't. First of all, the House of Representatives, the Speaker of the House, is Kevin McCarthy. You know why? Because you are the majority. The GOP is the majority party in the House of the. All right. So America's dumb. I get it. Let's pour jobs in there and let them at least contribute to the economy. That's my solution. <laughs> and Lala Ingram, oh, she is a she she breathes some rarefied air this one, okay? She doesn't want Donald Trump to be fingerprinted and or mugshotted, okay? Uh, because, you know, these are the people that scream that there's a two-tier system of justice. There's a two-tier system of justice. Uh, they think it's perfectly fine that every other white-collar criminal, every other, you know, uh, criminal on this planet, violent, nonviolent, financial, white-collar, blue-collar, murderer, rapist, everybody gets fingerprinted and mugshotted, okay? It's, uh, you know, the price for actually, uh, you know, being charged with felonies. It's the price you pay for having a grand jury return a verdict of indictment, okay? <laughs> It's just, uh, it's just the way, uh, you know, the world works. It's just the way America's law works, right? And she- Donald Trump will be fingerprinted. Yay. He will be photographed. Okay. And end up with a mugshot. The very first presidential mugshot. These people are sick. <laughs> How is a mugshot of the former president in any way necessary or in any way good for America? Oh. Are they really worried that he's going to disappear into the general population or that... As a 2024 presidential candidate, that he's going to try to leave the country, flee? I half expect him to push for bail to be set at a billion dollars. That'll show him the sick fantasy never ends. So a billion dollars is not a bad idea, Lala. (laughs) More wine, dear. Oh, she's a wine. Just 
Well, you know. But, uh, yeah, so um, she doesn't want Trump to be mugshotted or fingerprinted, even though he's been indicted for 91, uh, 91 felonies. 91. 13 in Georgia, but, okay, 91 felonies total. She has no problem with any of that. But if Joe Biden would pardon Hunter Biden, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They are such phonies. They are such frauds. They are shrill, shrieking, shrew frauds. Her, Janine Pirro. I mean, these girls, they, they are bizarro world. I mean, they can't get their lips big enough, okay? They can't uh, put on enough makeup. They can't show their legs often enough, even if they're in their 60s, okay? I, it's just, it's so unbelievable. It, it, they, they're all Ivy League, okay? They're all like elitists themselves, but they don't think that somebody who's been duly indicted by a jury, by a grand jury, who was in... I mean, she, you know, Fonnie Wells had two grand jury, but I do like the, uh, the billion-dollar bail idea. I like it a lot. But even better, I like my idea of remanding him to the Fulton County Jail pending trial, and then we accept the 2026 date. That works for everybody. Dan in Chicago. Hey, how's it going, Randy? Good. First time caller. Oh, hey. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. I just wanted to say you uh, you mentioned one of my absolute favorite people in the world, and that's Laura Ingram, and I only say that because I spend most of the time yelling at the TV whenever she's on. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about the uh, this program 2025 that the Heritage Foundation is, is pushing through. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I watched a, a YouTube video of their leadership summit, uh, and they're 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 totally word baiting. And as we learned from January six, words have consequences. But oh, they're yeah. using terms like "we need to have an army of conservatives who are weaponized to take action on day one," and it's 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 creepy and terrifying at the same time. Well, you know who's been preaching this, uh, you know, uh, philosophy, if you will, if you must, if you may, uh, forever is uh, Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon yeah. is the person that actually originated uh, this, uh, you know, take it over in 180 days, do it fast, get, uh, take you know. Take on the administrative state. Like that's the, yeah. Well, it's, it's, that's the end result that he's going for. But it's his idea that um, he thinks the only thing that was bad about Donald Trump's reign of terror over all of us, uh, not child separation, not throwing paper towels at hurricane victims in Puerto no, none of that. He thinks the mistake they made was not having these 20,000 government employees ready to go on day one to infiltrate the EPA, the, you know, the, the FTC, yeah. the FCC. And that's the lesson he took from Donald Trump's first, uh, you know, and only, uh, you know, presidency. And, he, right, and they're talking about like these four pillars. And it's like, the, you know, we can teach you how to get through a security clearance. We can teach you how to do that. And it's, yes. Yes. Yeah. So weird. basically yeah. the reason why the Heritage Foundation likes it so much is because the Heritage Foundation has always and for years and they are long termers, just so everybody knows they don't ever go away. They are long termers. They reinvent themselves over and over again. But what they've been after since W is something called the unitary executive. And that means that all the government agencies which are independent all the government agencies like the FDA, like the FEC, like the FTC, which, you know, it does antitrust and, and stuff like that, like the FCC, uh, all of them need to be under the president's thumb. The president is the unitary executive, and he gets to tell them everything about their mission, everything about what they can and can't do, everything about who they will go after, everything that they will break up, everything that they will uh, congeal, you know, everything that they will conglomerate. And that's so we're essentially a monarchy again, which is why we fought a revolutionary war. <laughs> right. But that's that's pretty much the heritage that they want. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. It's creepy. It's, yeah. They've been creepy. They've been doing this, Dan. I don't know. My entire adult life, my entire adult well, life. And then they got well, just, they got so many, uh, you know, uh, so many supporters of this uh, crazy unitary executive theory that they actually they pay for like Mark Levin show, they pay for, I mean, the, the amount of money the Heritage Foundation spends on supporting conservative media and the, yeah. and the big, the big roost that they have going on where let's say I'm Laura and I write a book, right? And I know nobody's going to read my damn book because I, I'm, I'm talking to an audience that doesn't read. So the sure. Heritage Foundation comes in, they buy 25,000 copies of my book. 
That it's gets me. The best seller. Yes, that, that <laughs> people are always shocked to find out you only have to sell twenty five thousand books to be on the New York Times bestseller. Right. But that gets you on the bestseller list. Then you can claim that, and then they give that book away for free when you donate to them. So yeah. it's just a racket. It's a racket. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, I do want to just uh, mention I have a new radio show that I'm starting here in Chicago oh. on Sunday morning from eight to nine. It's on WCPT eight twenty. Oh. Uh, we're doing what national and local politics stuff like that. So if your listeners want to tune in, more than welcome. What's your whole name? What do you go by? Uh, the show name is called A Politini. Uh, it's my friend Meg and I. We we basically talk about politics, and then we end each show with a nice recipe for a cocktail to kick off your Sunday. Um, but it's fun, and it's a good time. And we've, uh, we're getting some cool guests that are coming on. The governor's supposed to be on, uh, the mayor. So if you. you guys want to tune in, more than welcome. Good and I love your show. You. I listen to it. I listen to it all the time. So thank you for what you do. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for being yeah. the next generation. Have a good one. I know. I need to know that you're out there. I really do need to know that there are people coming up behind us. I really do. So eight to nine o'clock on WCPT in Chicago. He said, "A station I'm not allowed on." Just saying. But uh, WCPT eight twenty in Chicago. Eight to nine. What did he say? Saturday morning. Saturday morning with cocktails. <laughs> Wow, you start early. Okay, give him give him five minutes of your time. Give him give him twenty minutes. He'll give you the world. <laughs> is what he said. So that's awesome. All right, listen. Have a great weekend, Jury Duty. If you haven't watched it, it's on Amazon Prime. So good. Enjoy, and meet me back here on Monday. Have a good weekend. 